This video is going to give you an overview of uh, PTC Creo 3. So when you start up, you get kind of this little space here. Um, the first thing we want to do is we want to set our working directory. So I want to click on that. And I don't have a directory to work right now, so I'm going to right click and make a new folder and give it a name. And I'll say OK. Um, so that way, when I create files, they're going to be able to be saved directly into that folder. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to New. <clears throat> and in Creo, we have a few different ways we can do things. Um, we have parts we can make, um, both solid parts or sheet metal parts. And those would be the most of what we do. Uh, we'll start with solids. We also have assemblies. Um, you can go to manufacturing. You can go to drawings, things like that. Um, we're going to start with parts, though. We're going to give it a name. So we're going to give it a name for the part. If I want more of a description, I can do that here also. So I'm going to say OK. Oops. No space. There we go. So as it starts up, I've got my planes here. And right now it's in a trimetric orientation. So if I go to this button here and I go to reorientate, reorientate, um, and then I go to preferences, I can switch that to be isometric. And so depending on how you want to work, I prefer to work in isometric, um, so I'm going to do that. And you can see the difference in the orientation of the axes. In trimetric, the y-axis is at an angle also. In isometric, the y-axis is straight up. So I'll just say OK. So if I come back here and go to standard, now it's going to go back to that no matter how I move my axes. So to, to orbit like that, I just click the middle wheel and drag it. If I want to pan, I hold shift and the middle wheel and drag it. I can pan my, my object around. So middle, just middle wheel by itself, hold down, drag it around to orbit. Um, so you can see I have my planes set up and my origin. So once I want to get started, I'm going to create a sketch. And so now I'll pick which plane I want to sketch on. So I'm going to pick on this plane to sketch and I'm going to say sketch. So now I get these blue construction lines in um, for the x and y axis of that sketch um, that I'm drawing on. So now I can pick a tool to, to sketch. So if I want to draw a cylinder, I would draw a circle, start it at the center, bring it out, and click. And if I hit Escape or I middle click, I get this. And so it's giving me what size that is. Um, don't worry about drawing it the right size when you're, you're starting. You can add that in. So if I double click on this, I can change that to be 3 inches. It resizes it and resumes me in. So I can pan around and see that. Um, I can say OK. And now to make it 3D, go to Extrude. And I can grab the little box there, drag it up. Or I can type in here what distance I want. So if I want this to be two inches, I just hit two, enter, and I'm done. So now I have that cylinder diameter of three, height of two. Um, if I wanted to make a square hole in this, I could click on it, sketch, and so then now I have some other commands. I can use a line, I can use a rectangle. So if I go into rectangle, this one would let me pick the two corners, but that won't let me make that centered on that. And so part of what we're having in another video is design intent, so designing something and drawing it so that way it can change easily <clears throat> and, and keep the intent. So I'm going to go to a center rectangle, pick the center point, and come out. Middle button, so now you can see this here, and here I have these light blue dimensions. These are the weak dimensions, so these are dimensions that put in, um, and they're, they're there, but I haven't edited them yet. So if I want this to be one inch by two inches, I could click on that, change that to one. You can see now it's a dark blue dimension, so now it's a strong dimension. And I can change that to be two. Two. And so I could say OK, extrude. And I wanted that to cut, so I'm going to tell it to cut, and I'm going to flip the direction, so now it's going down. I can tell it to go down 0.5. And I can say OK. So, remember shift, middle mouse button, I can pan it, middle mouse button, I can drag it. You can see some of these things, it's hard to see what's going on 
especially in here on that edge. So I can go to View, and then um, Display Style, Shaded Width Edges. And that's usually how I prefer it to work. So that way I can see those edges in there. Um, but let's say I want to change this. And so the power of parametric modeling is that you can go back and change things you've already created. So I decide that I want this to be, that's going to be a square um, extrusion, not a rectangle. And I want to go all the way through the part. So if I uh, click on the little arrow next to the extrude, I can right click on the sketch and go to edit sketch. So if I want it to be square, and I know that from now on, I just want this to be to be to square. I, I just clicked on that dimension, I hit delete, and now it went back to a weak dimension, not a strong dimension. So I can have my constraints up here, so I can put in geometric constraints to control things, so I don't need to use numerical dimensions, um, and that's a preferred way of doing things. So if I know I want this to be squared, I can go to equal, click that line, and click that line. Now if I change this, escape to get out of the equal. If I double click on that, I can change that to 2. I can change it to 1.5, back to 1. And you can see it's staying a square, just keeping these two sides equal. And you can see that here with this L1. So that's that, that those two are the same length. Um, so I say OK. And now it's the right size, but I want it to go all the way through the part. So I'm going to right click on extrude, go to edit, and I could tell it just to come all the way down. That's going to make a whole way through. Um, but this is bad practice because if I make it just a little bit past it, and I say OK. OK, this is nice. It's going all the way through. But if I decide to change the height of the overall to 3, see that hole no longer goes through. So if I go to this extrude and edit it, and instead of telling it to be a distance, I can tell it to go through all. And so now it goes through, and if I change the first one to anything, I can make it 20. That hole, that, that, that square hole is still going all the way through the part. So using those terminations um, here, so a distance, metric, next face, those all have a direct impact on the design intent and how it's going to function when you change it. Um, because as I said during lecture, that's the guarantee that it's going to change. So I can bring that back down to 2, and it still goes all the way through. So <clears throat> some of the other things to do is um, if you're doing something and you don't have an interaction available, you don't, you're not sure what to do, hit the middle button. So if, if I want to make a Say I want to make a notch going this way here. I'm going to click on that face and create a sketch. And so I want to have, um, so I want to project that edge so I can work off of it. And I'm just going to draw a line. So I don't want it to go from the midpoint. So if I click there, it's going to lock it on the midpoint. I want it to be off to the side. And as I was drawing, you might not have noticed, but it came up with a little L there. So I want to middle click, and that gets me kind of done. And so I can see that it put in an equal constraint there. I didn't want that, so I'm going to click on it and hit delete. And so you can see it added another weak dimension for the width of the slot. Um, so I'm going to draw a new line across here because it can't use part of that other one. Um, but it's still not giving me just my shape. When I have a closed shape, it's going to shade it in, because it has this line out here that's not connected to anything. So I'm going to just click on that and hit delete, and you can see now it gave me a dotted line where that edge was, um, which is now a construction line, and now it shaded this in and found that as a closed profile. Um, so as I'm doing things, I can move things around, so if I want to to mention this, and I want it to be an eighth of an inch from here to here. Right now it's giving me an eighth there. But if I go to normal dimension, if I pick that edge and that face, 
I'm not seeing anything. If you're used to using SolidWorks or Inventor or anything else, you're used to dragging the dimension around. But if I just middle click, it puts the dimension in. So if you're using a, a decimal equivalent of a fraction, just type in the, the full equivalent. Don't round it, because um, then you'll be off by 5,000 so in this case. Um, if I want this to be 3 sixteenths, I could also just type in 3 sixteenths, and it does it. Um, so I can put those in. Now all those weak, there's no weak dimensions left. Everything is a strong. It's what I want. I can say OK. Extrude. Oh, I want to flip that direction. And it automatically took it over to cut for me. And again, tell it what do I want. I want it to go all the way through. Do I want a distance? If I don't want that to cut back half an inch, put that in. So now it only cuts back half an inch. I want it to go all the way through. Tell it to go all the way through. And hit OK. So I hope that's kind of got you started. Um, one other thing is that if you want to right click, a quick right click does nothing. You have to right click and hold in order to get the menu. So if I right click and hold here, I can get a menu. Um, if I hold Alt, now I can pick in edges. I can right click and hold. Um, and now I can go straight to a round, put that in on that edge. So um, if you see in the instructions, right click, you have to right click and hold to get to the menu. Uh, middle click if you're not sure what to do. Um, I hope this is a good start and I'll see you in the next video.